Hi, I'm Zach. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to fix a hip flexor pull in one to two sessions using this specific exercise and test. But before we do that, we're going to show you an athlete who was hurt for over a month with a hip, hip flexor pull injury, couldn't play soccer, and after only one session, he was able to get back on the field and back playing soccer again. So how long has this been bothering you for? About like three, four weeks. Okay, where does it hurt you exactly? Like right in here, my hip flexor. And weakness, it is piriformis, and it is uh, his glute minimus. So once we got this strengthened up, then he should be able to go out and run, and there shouldn't be any pain after. I bet after one or two sessions, we should be good to go. And is it 100% now, or close to 100%? Close, like 95, basically. So you're able to run at practice now, yes. no problem? No problem. So the reason Jake pulled his hip flexor, and, and before I explain exactly that, I want, to, I want you to understand the hip flexor muscles here. So when you're lifting up and you're doing hip flexion here, the adductors are also part of hip flexion. The only adductor muscle that's not part of hip flexion is your groin magnus. So the adductors work with the TFL, your rectus femoris, and your sartorius. Those are the main muscles that are going to be involved in hip flexion. So when you lift up here, the adductors are working. The other thing I want you to understand is that the glute medius and minimus, when you medially rotate the leg in this way, the adductors work with the glute medius and minimus in order for those muscles to immediately rotate inward here. So, that being said, if you have a weakness in your glute minimus and medius, particularly in the minimus here, what's going to happen is, is that the adductor chain is going to have to work harder. And that's ultimately what led to his pectineus pulling, and also he had some issues in his, in his brevis and longus in the adductors. So if we're trying to isolate the minimus, there's two different ways we can look at this, okay? So a lot of, in our industry, a lot of people do, it's called the clam. So they do this. So they're externally, they're using their external rotators. At the same time, they're basically adducting. So what we're doing is, is we're putting 50% on the external rotators, which are your piriformis, your, uh, your TFL and your sartorius, and we're putting about 50% on the glute medius and glute minimus. We're not purely isolating the minimus. So if we're gonna isolate the minimus, what we need to do is, is we need to adduct and we need to internally rotate. The medius and minimus are, like I just talked about in the other clip, they're internal, they're medial rotators. So if we adduct and medially rotate, that's ultimately what's gonna isolate more of the minimus than the medius. We're trying to isolate the medius. What we need to do is we need to turn down and kick back at an angle more in a hip extension. But notice how this foot is still medially rotated as I lift. That's ultimately what's going to really crush and isolate the medius. If we're looking at this purely from a sports standpoint, one of the muscles we never isolate, how many times when we squat or when we do RDLs, and we deadlift. Those are all gonna be hitting up mostly the glute maximus and glute medius. The glute minimus is the one muscle group that we hardly ever target and hit. And that's why this isolation exercise is so important to eliminate so many different injuries besides a hip flexor. And at the end of the video, we have some more links on some other way, some other injuries that can be healed by strengthening up the glute minimus. So I just want to go a little bit more over the technique of this exercise and where you should feel it, okay? So the straighter our legs are out, the harder it's going to be to get that rotation. So you want the legs slightly bent, knees are a little bit in front of the body, and you just lift up and rotate, just like that. Just get that rotation feeling in there. You can even start high if you want with the athlete and then rotate, or you can start down low and then just rotate up at the top. So you could start here, and if they don't feel it into this minimus area here, if they feel the compensations take over, which is they might be using some of the uh, the other medial rotators, your adductors here, they might feel it more in there, or they feel it along the IT band, TFL, then I'm immediately gonna, I'm immediately thinking, all right, we need to strengthen up their glute medius 
build that chain up, and then go back in and strengthen up the minimus. So what we do is, here's the, the medius exercise. You're totally gonna rotate down, and you're gonna lift the leg up. You can have the leg a little bit bent. So when you do this exercise here, we do it up against the wall. You get nice and tight to the wall. Rotate your hips down, push into the wall, and lift. And that's the best way to strengthen the, the medius. And the medius is right here, this, this top portion here of the butt. That's where you want to feel when you do that exercise. So we'll get that fired up, two or three sets of 15 to 20. And then once the medius is activated, then typically we'll go back to this exercise and do two or three sets, 15 to 20. And we build up from two to 10 pound ankle weights. And we only go up in weight if they feel it in that minimus area. If they don't feel it in that minimus area, it's no good. And as far as the medius work, once we get this, once we get this activated, the minimus, and it's working efficiently, I just let your general Bulgar Bulgarian split squats or Romanian deadlifts, glute bridges, squats, drive up the strength of the medius, and I focus simply on the minimus exercise. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. For more episodes on rehab and sports training, Look at our playlist titled Educational Episodes.